Okay, so when it comes to retirement, how much money do you think people think we need to live comfortably? Okay, you probably have a number of something in your head. Okay, so according to a recent survey, a cool $1.7 million is the number the average Canadian thinks. That is now $300,000 more than Canadians thought we needed just three years ago. It's a lot. Uh, Riley, is this a realistic number or is this, is this just really anxiety inducing? <laughs> I'm feeling anxiety. Yeah. Not realistic for me. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, so also I'm 23. So the idea of, I, I was instilled at least, I know I'm a baby, um, <laughs> but <laughs> having my, my, I feel my stepfather's like uh, voice in my head telling me since like I was 15 and working at McDonald's to be putting money away from retirement. Um, but the idea that that would somehow amount to $1.7 million was never part of that vision, even though it was something, you know, I, I, it's not like I was neglecting it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that I think is so interesting about that is it says people think we need $1.7 million. They don't know, it doesn't say if they think that that's reasonable or realistic mm -hmm. or something that they can attain. And so what, and I'd have to imagine that at least for young people, I don't know any of my friends who also think they're going to be making $1.7 million for their retirement. So like, what does it say to have entire generations of people who don't feel like they're going to be able to retire, aren't going to be able to live comfortably, don't think that they're going to have a strong economic future. I think politically, that's something that more than just like lowering interest rates immediately is going to fix. We're dealing with something long term and really deep here. Um, so yeah, big, big red flags going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to think, like I think about my parents' generation. Like my parents were both teachers, that's sort of a humble kind of job. Um, and they retired at 55. They're both in, of them? Both of wow. them retired at 55. Wow. I think my mom kept on doing a little bit of librarian work here and there for a little while, but they've managed to pay off their home, and continue to travel once a year. They live very frugally. My dad loves a flyer with a coupon. Like, <laughs> like love, love, love. But somehow that's, that's, that was attainable. Part of that is pension plans, you know. But those are things I don't know in today's economy that that setup is even achievable. So you're right, like there's something broken. And you have to be healthy. Yes. Um, it, it's, you know, it's about, you know, this, these are the ideal circumstances you know, if, if God forbid something happens or you have a health condition. So you're talking about your parents. My parents, for example, also worked very hard, put a good amount of money away, but then my mother was diagnosed with a chronic illness. And so it's not just about uh, being able to get treatment, it's about the drugs. They're expensive. My parents spend thousands of dollars a month on medication to keep my mother alive. And it comes out of insurance, but they still have to top up. Mm -hmm. So then when you factor in inflation and um, the, the, the cost of living crisis and all of that, I, I don't know how families are going to be able to afford this also when, if there's a health condition, mm -hmm. a it's health true. situation. It's true. I, I mean, uh, I did something that I shouldn't do, which was I got uh, online and typed in retirement calculator. And I guess for some people that's, uh, I mean, I love a good calculator online. Like, you know, the mortgage calculators, the retirement <laughs> calculators, and I went. And it's actually, it was eye-opening because the numbers I was putting in, like what if someone is making $100,000 a year gross? What if somebody is making $50,000 a year gross? And of course, it has to do with so many factors. It is the age that you choose to retire. It is, you know, how healthy you are. It's how long you live. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to live as long and healthily as I can for so many reasons, but that's going to take money mm -hmm. the longer I live, you know, and I do want to live a long time. So now I'm going to have to be maybe working a lot longer than I thought. But, but then, anyway. But on that point, just sorry to interrupt, but like, I'm curious, Riley, like if, if more people are, like, are staying in their jobs longer because they can't afford to retire. Right. Doesn't that bug you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm wondering, right? Because, like, get out. Generation, are you like, get the heck out? Yeah, I mean, it, it, yes and no, in that, like, my maybe my initial reaction is that, but I also feel like the problem is not with, like, individual people who are also in situations where they need to keep working in order to survive. Like, if we're talking about, you know, my grandparents worked basically until until they passed. Like, um, you know, they didn't have a pension, and so, like, they had to be there. And so I, I'm and the solution I can't say is to say, you know, elderly people... Uh, you should have planned better, get over it. It's to say, you know, like horrible. It's instead to say that I think that there are systemic affordability issues, that the workforce 
course, is not what it was promised to be to millennials and Gen Z, and that there needs to be bigger changes than just individuals leaving and going. It's not going to fix, I don't think, the base problem. We'll just run into it again next generation if that's the case, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe bigger thinking about it is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Hey there, wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.